Oh, I'm s sorry. You can see there uh, on Saturday, um, I'm not continuing my tradition of viewing two movies uh, sort of underdressed. Um, let me just say the magic words and uh, transform into my movie uh, making clothes. Hey, this is Trey Pastor. Um, I'm back in my movie making clothes. I feel better. Uh, my movie reviewing clothes. I'm better, so I have the two movies that I'm reviewing for you. Uh, this is old, kind of classic Hollywood. Um, the first movie that I'm reviewing is 1948's The Treasure of Sierra Madre. The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, starring Humphrey Bogart, uh, John, Houston, John Houston, Walter Houston, and Tim Holt. The next movie I'll be reviewing is uh, Strangers on a Train, Alfred Hitchcock, starring uh, Farley Granger, um, Robert Walker, and uh, Ruth Roman, and Patricia Hitchcock is in this as well. Okay, now, the first movie that uh, we're talking about is, uh, of course, The Treasure of Sierra Madre, The Treasure of the Sierra Madre, and it's basically, uh, came out in 1948, and this movie actually won three Academy Awards uh, for... Uh, best Supporting Actor for um, Walter Houston, and Best Director and Best Writer Screenplay for by um, John Houston. Okay, basically this is a story that takes place in Mexico. Uh, you have two Americans, Fred Dobbs, played by Humphrey Bogart, and Bob Curtin, played by um, Tim Holt. They're searching for work in Mexico. They're basically down on their luck, and even in the beginning of the movie, they show you where the Humphrey Bogart's character, Fred Dobbs, is basically down on his luck, and he's literally begging everybody in the street for money. And he even goes up to this American three times in a white suit to ask him, you know, can you please help a fellow American with Donald's luck? Uh, and that, uh, that brief cameo was played by the writer and director, John Houston, actually. And uh, Fred Dobbs actually he meets uh, Bob Curtin and the other fellow American basically when they're basically sleeping on a bench. And they kind of, you know, team up to look for work together and they actually even find some work and they are promised to get paid, you know, after working this job, the guy winds up stiffing them and basically while they're in a shelter, they overhear this old prospector, uh, played by, uh, Walter Houston, basically talking about how, you know, how he is an expert in finding gold and how gold changes men and stuff and how he wouldn't mind going back out one last time to, you know, stake a claim and, and he even says how gold changes people. And Fred Dobbs is, you know, they're listening to him and Bob Curtin, and, and uh, Fred Dobbs chimes in and says, listen, I would be sad if I had just get 50000 I wouldn't be greedy. i just take my 50000 and go. And, and of course, uh, Walter Houston's basically telling him, no, listen, yeah, I, you know, you don't know how a man reacts when he comes around to gold and stuff. A man can do anything, even commit murder and stuff. So, listen, you know, they kind of go their separate ways, and... While they're um, walking down the street, they actually see the man who basically ripped them off, and they basically follow him into a bar and, and basically jump him and be, <laughs> basically beat the crap out of him and take their money that, they, that they're owed. And then, you know, Fred Dobbs decides, you know, he tells Bob Curtin, listen, why don't, why don't we just find that old man and, and take the rest of the money that we have and, and, and go profit him some gold? Why not? He said, well, what can be better off than just waiting around in this town begging for handouts, he said, you know what, you're right. So they go find the old man, and they actually go set out to go up in the mountains and find, you know, they buy burrows and equipment, and they go up to, to find the gold. And, and literally, you know, of course, Fred Dobbs and Bob Curtin are not used to this hard, hard work, and they, and it's tiring, and it's sweating, and it's hot, and of course, they even want to give up, but until they actually, actually find some gold, and then they start mining it, and then just like the old man predicted, and the moves makes the drama for the movie, the goal starts to affect, starts to affect the, the three men, specifically Fred Dobbs' character, played by Humphrey Bogart. He really starts to, I guess, get gold fever in a way, and starts to become just a, a, a you know, a, a nasty character, and it's a really good por por uh, portrayal by Humphrey Bogart, and it's, like I said, not only do you have to deal with them turning on each other. They also have the word about bandits and federales, and it's just a really good human drama uh, about greed and how greed affects people. And just really good. And I see why uh, 
Walter Houston, who plays the old prospect of one Academy Award, he's really good in this in this part. You know, he's the old prospector. Okay, so and this, a really good performance too by Humphrey Bogart as well. I thought he was fantastic as the man that slowly starts to change and when he lets the gold affect him. Okay, definitely a uh, treasure of Sierra Maggio. I would give it an eight point five. Just a really good performance by uh, not John Houston by Walter Houston and also Humphrey Bogart as well. Okay, now. The next movie is a Hitchcock movie. I'm a big fan of Hitchcock. And that movie is 1951's Stranger on a Train. Okay, this movie stars um, uh, Barley Granger, uh, Robert Walker, Ruth Roman. And it's basically the story about a guy, about how these two guys meet on a train, basically. Stranger on a train. And uh, Farley Granger plays Guy Haynes. He's like a tennis pro who's you know, tennis professional, not tennis pro, a tennis professional, a professional tennis player, and he's married to a wife that basically wants him to divorce him and she's even pregnant by another man. And he's seeing, at the same time, he's seeing a senator's daughter, uh, Ann Morton, played by Ruth Roman. Okay, and he actually he meets on the train while traveling uh, home to get the divorce from his, from his estranged wife. He meets a character named Bruno. Anthony, played by Robert Walker, who basically, basically recognizes him and starts up a conversation and even brings up a suggestion about, listen, you know what the thing is about murder? That you can never get away with it? Because people automatically, once you commit a murder, they automatically assume you're the person who did it because you're close, you have a motive, you have reason. But if, if let's say, if two people meet, he said, and then switch murders, and where there's no connection between the, the murderer and the murder, you know, the murderer and the murder, there'd be no connection. And, and of course, Guy Haynes is kind of laughs it off and basically goes his own way. But Bruno Anthony is psychotic, and he literally does something about it. And basically, that's the gem of the movie, where you have this Bruno Anthony character, after he commits the murder that you know, Guy Haynes never, never really wanted, he basically starts stalking him to get him to fulfill his end of the bargain of killing uh, Bruno and Anthony's father, who he can't stand, and the rest of the movie is basically the cat and mouse game between the guy Haynes and and Bruno and Anthony, and whether the cops are going to find out what really happened. Okay, and it's a really, really good movie, really good drama, good suspense, and some great classic scenes by Hitchcock. Uh, again, there's this. Well, I don't want to spoil it too, too much, but there's a lot of classic scenes in this movie, and it's just. A pleasure to watch, and Hitchcock was great. And I also pay special attention to Robert Walker as Bruno Anthony. He was fantastic. It's this psychotic, you know, Bruno Anthony who basically takes it on himself to commit a, commit a murder and then expect the murder back in return. I thought he was fantastic, and I thought Farley Granger was decent as Guy Haynes and you know, Patricia uh, Hitchcock plays the sister of a Ruth Roman's character, who's Ann Morton, uh, and she's really good too. You know, so she's like the smarty addict little sister of the character and she plays a kind of a pivotal part in the story as well and it's a really good movie classic Hitchcock great suspense and the ending I like the ending as well as too and I'm going to give a uh, Strangers on the Train an 8.5 I think one of Hitchcock's best definitely totally worth seeing so uh, definitely check that out Strangers on the Train 8.5 Charles of Sierra Madre 8.5 as well just um Two great, you know, great movies to see and watch. And uh, just uh, let me know what you think of those titles. And uh, feel free, you know, to leave comments down below and let me know what you think. Yeah. Okay, now I want to you know, get out of these movie making movie a uh, movie you're getting closed and. Uh, get back to my regular clothes. So I'll say the magic word. Okay, and um... <laughs>